Hello guys. It's time for another new invention or new technique, so to speak. Um, the, this one's about frequency separation, which I know is a hot topic. And uh, I still think it's a really useful technique as long as you don't blur or filter or use uh, any kind of automated methods to try and fix skin. Um, I have a whole over an hour long video if you want to dive deep into the technicalities of frequency separation, but um, let's leave that for now. So the issue with frequency separation that I have mostly is that it can create a lot of artifacts in your image. So what I always use to recommend is that once you did your whatever you wanted to do, in this one I've boosted the effect a bit because this image uh, handled frequency separation pretty well and I didn't have time to find another one. But I'm sure you've seen the issues that come up sometimes. And especially if you're working in 8-bit. Um, I'll explain why in a little bit. So, as in the other techniques, to really see what happens, I have uh, copied my original layer on top put it to difference and then I have a levels adjustment to boost uh, what my eye can see. Uh, when you compare frequency separation you also need to merge because the preview is not uh, as good. So in this one I misbehaved a little bit but sometimes it's really useful to do a multiple split and this is what I've done here. Um, so let's merge this one. So this is the result. As you can see, it's a big difference. But this is it, the result of the frequency separation below and what it changes in the image. You can see it can create some banding here and in a lot of places. Um, the difference isn't that big, but I mean, if you really care about quality, then you want the best. And if you're printing, this stuff might show up. And it's not a nice surprise having to print stuff again. Or um, even if you don't notice it from the beginning, someone else might. And I just think um, you really should try and get the best quality as you can without spending any extra time. So the new frequency separation technique is actually just the, um, a help layer that fixes um, the difference. So the background to this is that the high layers are linear light. Um, Um, and linear light works by putting everything that's 50% gray untouched, anything that has a different luminosity or color, it pushes towards that direction. But the issue is that since uh, the whole range in 8 bit is from um, uh, 0 to 255, it can only push uh, from. Um, uh, 128, which means um, it will push the whole way because that's how it works. So if you put pure white, it pushes all the way, even though it's from only from the middle to the end. Uh, but there's gaps in between because you only have available 128 uh, tones to brighten, for example. And uh, to brighten all the way, uh, it's 128. And that simulates 
that is 255. But that also means that there's gaps in between. So uh, to get a more accurate frequency separation, let's put this back into linear light and just compare. So this is the frequency separation that I did. And with my help players, I can see the issues like I showed you before. So this is the old stamp. So let's take this away. And now um, I've added a couple of new frequency separation techniques and custom ones and everything. You'll see more about this in the toolkit later on, but I wanted to um, show this new invention of the frequency separation, which is essentially a fix for the gaps. So like I said, middle gray is 127.5 and it's 128 in uh, 8 bit. And then it pushes it towards the ends, but it only really has uh, 128 available tones. So what you need is another layer that compares. So uh, what my new technique does is just a button that says fix, frequency separation fix. And if you're inside a frequency separation that you did and you press it, it adds another layer. And this is just the difference from the original again. And if you look at it like this, in most images, there's like, maybe you can actually detect something. I can on my screen here, so. Um, Anyway, and uh, now to judge this, let's put it back into linear light. Let's judge, name this old technique and then do um, stamp. So this is the new with the fix layer. And this might be something that you don't need in every image, but I mean, adding one more layer to make sure that you don't end up with any issues when you are using your uh, frequency separation is to me a no brainer and it's something that I will always use. So compare now to the original, this is my fixed one and this was before. Quite the difference. Of course, I've boosted it by levels to really see what's going on. But again, anything that's there in the image might show up when you print or on a different screen or so you really need to be careful if you want the good quality. And I think you all do. So new frequency separation technique is just a fixed layer to take care of the gaps that's created with linear light. And I have a lot of other new stuff as well. I'm going to show this later. But um, yeah, that's all there is. As soon as you done did your frequency separation, whatever method you prefer, if you do median surface blur, any other filter, or if you paint with the blur tools or whatever you do when you do the split, um, at the end, just press the frequency separation fix and it adds another layer, which takes care of uh, most of the issues. And uh, you're good to go. I hope you like it. See you soon.